Hi, my name's Russ and I'm from Wavespin. I know that because they put my name on my jacket so I wouldn't forget who I was. It's a Michigan thing. Hey, we've started a YouTube channel called Wavespin Real Adventures. And you'll be seeing uh, videos, or I should say, yeah, videos posted to this YouTube channel occasionally. From everything from being on the water fishing, maybe some hunting, uh, how to's, how not to's, tips and tricks little bit of everything. Some of it I hope you find entertaining as well as something you can put in the application and some of it maybe you're just going to say, say oh, those guys have lost their minds. Today I want to talk to you about something that's been a pet peeve of mine for a while. <coughs> Excuse me. Now being from Michigan, um, I've never seen this ever been done before until I started hanging out with Doug years back and what I'm talking about is at the end of the day, people taking their fishing gear, uh, their reels primarily, and dump, dunking them in a bucket of water or spraying them off with a pressurized water source. Um, I found it shocking, to be honest with you, because they weren't, reel isn't made to be used underwater, so why would you subject it to that environment? Why would you do that to a reel? So I started doing some research because I was curious. And what I found out is it appears that that method of cleaning although it's not recommended by anybody, um, started with the charter boats primarily on the, on the coastal ways and the reason being is a couple fold. One is uh, sometimes they take two groups out a day they needed a, a, need a fast way to clean their equipment and prepare it for the next group. Um, a second thing is charter boats probably put as much wear and tear on their gear in four to six months as you or I would in two to three years. They're probably expecting to replace their equipment at least once a year. Um, so that aspect of it's not near as important to them. Um, I'll make a deal with you. I talked to a captain a while back who told me, he says, no matter what brand, how much I pay, um, I can't get more than six months out of it. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. There's a lot of very good reels out there and a, a wide variety of prices. How can you not get six months out of a quality reel? And then we got to the cleaning part and he told me, he says, I... I spray them off with a hose. And I said, aha, stop doing that. He said, well, I don't get it. I said, look, I'll make a deal with you. You provide me with any type of paperwork from any production reel company that states that either dunking or spraying off with a pressurized water source is an acceptable cleaning method, method according to the manufacturer. And I said, uh, I'll put reels on your boat no charge. He said, by God, I'll take you up on that. And first week went by and I didn't hear from him. Second week then go up, went by and I didn't hear from him. Third week I called him. I said, hey, uh, you got me any literature or even an advertisement, anything that says that dunking or spraying with a pressurized water source is an acceptable way to clean your grills. No, he says, I can't find anything. And guys, girls, I don't think you'll ever find any documentation that says that. Let me show you four things. One is a nice little shotgun, maybe it'd be a rifle, handgun. One is just a standard hunting knife. Third one is a piece of electronics off my personal boat. Fourth one is a fishing reel. This one happens to be a legend. Uh, from wave spin, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, so the question is, which one of these four would you feel safe throwing in a bucket of water, or spraying off with a pressurized water source, or God forbid, a pressure washer? Why the knife is the only one. Uh, knife is non-mechanical, non-electrical. Spray it off, wash it off, sharpen it, dry it off, put a coat of oil on it, put it back away. The other three things I mentioned are either mechanical, or electronical and some things of course are both so you're not going to throw your shotgun or your rifle in a bathtub full of water uh, I have seen it done with muzzle loaders but that's another story guys um, because if you do all the small mechanical stuff inside the bolt the firing pin the safety uh, internal hammer everything you got to take it to a gunsmith unless you happen to be one of those rare few who know how to do it yourself tear it down clean it re-lubricate it you know that to be a fact. You wouldn't take your prized weapon and throw it in a bathtub full of water or spray it off with your pressure washer. Um, same thing with the electronics. 
Nobody in their right mind is going to spray their electronics with a hose or submerge it in a bucket of water. A lot of you guys got a lot of money tied up in electronics. And although the one I just showed you isn't real expensive, it's a very nice one. And it works for me. And I'm not going to spray it off with a hose or dunk it in a bucket of water. Same thing with your reels. The very most I would do with the reel, if you happen to drop it in the sand or drop it in the mud, and you know for a fact that the sand and mud or whatever is only on the exterior side of the reel, take it off the rod. Hold it over your kitchen sink. Turn your water on so it's just a very slow stream. Keep the reel held up this way at all times. Let the stuff wash off. If you flip it this way, water is going to go underneath the spool, skirt, and up into the rotor. And there's moving parts up there. Okay, Seal bearings, not seal bearings. Almost all reels have seal bearings anymore. You're not going to hurt the bearings. But you have shafts. You have oscillators. You've got moving parts galore. Um, the bearings be fine, but uh, for example, your line roller, uh, the line roller itself, you're going to have stuff get up, build up on both sides of that. Um, what I'm advising you is, what I'm asking you, what I'm telling you is, don't dunk and don't spray off your reels. And I can prove that to you. Here's a mason glass. I put two in the dishwasher and clean them up good. And as you can see, nice and clean. I took a second one, approximately the same size, and I put just a little bit of water in it. About the amount you would find in, inside of a middle size, medium sized reel if you were to dunk it or spray it off. And then I allowed it to dry. And this is what you get. And if you look down inside there, you know, all the calcium and the line buildup that's inside there, this is ridiculous. Okay? You let water get inside your reel, and especially if you're putting it to yourself by spraying or dunking, when you're not going to get, what do you, you can't pick the reel up and go like this. You're not going to get all the water back out of there. When that dries, that residue, as in the inside of that jar, is what's going to be left behind inside your reel. That was fresh water from my kitchen tap. Uh, imagine what lake water, ocean water, salt. Add salt to the mix. Salt's going to dissolve. You're going to dunk it. You're going to spray it. Anything that's in the outside of the reel is going to dissolve. It's going to shove into every crevice it can up underneath the skirt on the spool. And then it's going to dry there. Remember in junior high when your science teacher said let's dissolve salt and water? Maybe add a little food coloring. Put it in a jar, a clear jar. Set it on the windowsill and let it, let it evaporate. And you get beautiful salt crystal pictures or structures. That's what you're doing to your reel. So don't do it. I mean, I learned a long time ago, a little common sense and a little logic goes a long ways in life. And we should apply that to our fishing and hunting as well. Uh, and common sense and logic tells me if a product's not made to be used underwater, don't put it underwater. Don't spray it off with a pressurized water source. Uh, water source. Um, it's not difficult. That's your tip for the day. Forget what anybody else told you about dunking and spraying. Just don't do it. One other quick tip. At the end of the day, you've got your reel done. This is how you clean your reel. Wipe it off with a damp cloth. Cover everything you can. Wipe it off with a dry cloth. And if you want a real cool trick, take a can of Indust or Pledge or some other furniture polish. Spray it on your reel. Wipe it back off with that dry rag. It's the same as putting a coat of wax on your car, truck, or boat. I hope this was helpful. I welcome all comments. And hey, if you can find paperwork from another uh, real manufacturer that says dunking or spraying is an acceptable cleaning method, do me a favor. Copy that down, scan it, and send it to me at russ at wavespinreel.com because I've never seen it and I'd really like to. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Hope it helped out.